Holla Bullers! What's going on? It's Preacher! And after the last video on Saturday about the guides coming, uh, you guys were like, can you let us know what it's really like to level a lot of alts in Legion? <laughs> because we're afraid! We're afraid of what it's like! I don't blame you, man. So we're going to keep track of this because I've got like a week-long project uh, to get this done while Andy is doing The Last of Us on the live stream. Enjoy it, mate! Loving it, mate! Well played, sir. So that's going on there, which gives me time to sort of just plow through a lot of really mundane World of Warcraft stuff. But if you are looking to get an alt in WoW right now, you might be interested to know exactly what it's like and the progress we're making. So we'll kind of track the progress. I've set myself a number of goals and I want to be clear here, nobody should be attempting to do what I'm doing right now. You will instantaneously kill your love of the game. I'm treating it as a work project, which is going to be getting pretty much all 11 characters to not only the cap, 36 points in every artifact weapon. That's every single spec. Trying to get two Legos, but... Regardless of trying, if not maybe when, we will be getting the class hall research up to the point where we can get two legendaries on every single character and doing one raid run on, on them in order to get them relatively decent gear. So when 7.25 drops, we are on par with where at least most players should be able to get to. That's the idea. We want a character that's not too under geared to the point where it's pointless and i can't demonstrate a lot of things but not over geared to the point where i'm talking about things that won't affect many of you that's what we're trying to get so what were the big challenges in laying this down honestly you might say ap ap is not that bad it really isn't um what i did is i already had s seven or eight capped characters when we started this and all of them had their artifact knowledge done so the first thing i had to do was do the broken shore scenario on all of those characters so we can unlock the next level of artifact knowledge and then get that ticking now i actually did that a week or so ago uh so they've been ticking up so the byproduct of doing any content in wow right now is you get ap for it and you get quite a lot so reaching 36 points which is what you actually need to get the extra 10 percent. 35 gets you the golden trait but what we actually want is the 36 point which is going to give us the extra 10 percent damage 10 percent 33 percent armor something like that and all the characters that's the main thing we're after um that's not too bad it's a little bit of a chore if you're starting from absolutely fresh but on average you get i got today on the three character cycle i'm doing so the way i decided to do this is for resources and ap i'm doing three characters per day uh and then trying to level something at the tail end of that now i actually did four today it's the first day i did the priest today i did the dk today i did the demon hunter today and i did the monk today and then leaving them three days so i prioritized characters that needed a lot of class hall resources so before i get to that ap wise i'm pulling in about nine million just from doing like odd world quests and stuff that's getting me about nine million ap per character and that's more than enough to generally get them close to if not done with a lot of their artifact traits but like i said some characters are gonna need two days the big problem and the big hurdle that i've ran into and maybe a problem for you guys as well isn't ap as you might have thought it's actually class hall resources oh what a big fucking drag this is it's a serious drag even though some of them have been reduced getting all the class hall resources so that you can do a couple of things one you want to keep your artifact knowledge ticking over in each of these characters right that's the thing you need to do uh, i also want to have the dual equipped legendaries that runs into the many thousands as you probably know it's like eight thousand plus blah 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 thousand not too bad on your main character who's naturally equipping these like my main character has 80 odd thousand resources without even trying um but when you're looking at it from alt's point of view it's a real drag and this is where you can kind of help that out by adding in the blood of sagaras world quests in order to get a lot of extra class hall resources because if you want to do missions as well on the side of that you got to remember a night hold mission is like a thousand resources if you want to get the gear from there and if it's an alt that's for raid finder gear so you really have to make a judgment there whether or not that's going to be worthwhile to you is trying to is spend i mean i'm at the point where a thousand class hall resources for a piece of raid finder gear that's kind of not worth it in the position I'm in because I want those resources for bonus roll coins. I, want, I don't want to keep farming this on alts by any means. I'm giving them two days. So generally speaking, I was able to pull in about 8,000 resources per character in one sort of circle of all of um, the broken sh the broken aisles. And that includes doing the broken shore itself. The broken shore is a very quick thing to do. We have to give big shout outs here and I really recommend this if you're looking to get into alts. If you haven't done it already, is flying... It's a game changer. 
There's no getting away from it. It's an absolute game changer uh, to get the flying. The flying has saved me endless amounts of time. More than I ever thought imagin imaginable. But when looking at alts and just zipping around and getting stuff done, especially if you're doing world quests and stuff on all five maps, uh, then yeah, flying is the absolute godsend and you must be able to get that, including the, doing the PvP dailies, jumping up to the top of the map. Obviously, if you don't know, PvP dailies are a huge, huge bonus to artifact power if you've not been doing them already. So, you might be saying, what, doesn't this seem inefficient? Not really. If I was going for pure artifact power, then yes, this would be very inefficient. It's just kind of running through world quests as fast as possible and then moving on to other things. But as my primary, uh, th the most difficult thing for me to get is actually the class all resources, then this is actually very efficient. If I look at it that way and I pick up AP along the way, which is what I'm doing, is just naturally gathering AP along the way and bypassing anything that doesn't directly lead to either class all resources, resources or AP. So if it's gold or it's food or something like that, then there we go. Uh, specific sort of commentary then on my classes, because I think that's another thing people are asking about is can you talk about the classes? Uh, my DK is already 880 odd geared. He's already done his raid run, so smash through that. Demon Hunter naturally just demolishes everything. So if you're looking towards a Demon Hunter for alts, my Demon Hunter is 860-something and crushes the entire world. It's really quite crazy in comparison to some other things. Similarly with my Windwalker Monk. My Windwalker Monk is about 865. Absolutely dominated rares. Dominated group content. Dominated the world bosses. I had to do the world boss five times today. Crushed it without even questioning it. As opposed to my priest, which was the biggest drag so far. I kind of knew it would be. Uh, there is a huge problem in my eyes with undergeared priests compared to what they become. They need to smooth that out big time because a lower geared priest, and he is lower geared, he's about 830 something, so a 30 item level difference there, which he picked up a lot of item levels today, um, is just awful. Absolutely awful in, uh, in the open world, particularly after the changes in 7.2. Uh, I mean, to put it into context, the boar that gives a slab of bacon wrecked me. Absolutely wrecked me. Like, so hard. Yeah, that mob that we one-shot on pretty much everything. And doing it on my all, any other character I've had has never been a problem. It wrecked my priest so hard. I went into it, admittedly, with my cooldowns used. So I didn't have Vampiric Embrace. I didn't have Shadow Fiend. And he just dominated me. There was nothing I could do. Stunning it. Spamming shields on cooldown. Healing myself wherever possible. It was just no way I could get that fucking thing down. Had to wait for somebody to help me. And in fact, with most world quests, I was so thankful for the world quest group finder. As it just meant that I could actually find them up. Uh, I could just get other people. And it's sad, really. But I had to get other people to basically do the world quest for me. Because they were just getting mangled. My priest was getting mangled by so many things. I could barely kill. As sad as it is. I think... Um, I had an interesting world boss encounter on my Shadow Priest where it was just a tank and a healer who were doing the world boss and me DPSing it. So it, the DPS was very smooth. It was 100k over what was, I think, about an 8 or 9 minute world boss kill. Realistically speaking, that's what it was. Um, which was nice to see, actually. Like 100k, given that item level, I'm not going to moan that too much. Straight single target. Uh, but uh, the rest of the world was just horrendous. That's been the biggest draw so far. Am I feeling... <laughs> Let's track this over the week as well. Am I feeling burnt out on this yet? No. Uh, I Luckily, I managed to finish all four classes and then jump over the druid where I very quickly... Again, flying is the godsend here. Instant flight farm is just amazing. Where I managed to pick up two levels within the space of an hour real, real quickly. And I've no doubt I'll be able to cap that out. I, I, I would be very surprised if I don't cap that over than by Wednesday, I would imagine. We'll probably cap that out and see where he's going there. But so far, we're looking at just the Death Knight complete. So far, we have just the Death Knight complete. Plenty of other things to go on with. We'll get there. Uh, tomorrow, I'm probably going to focus on Warrior, Shaman, and maybe, maybe the Hunter. Uh, maybe the Hunter and get those done and out of the way. And that means, for the most part, class all resources is done besides the characters that aren't yet capped, which is where I want to be at. All right, guys, so there's my update. Take that as you will. I'll see you again. Bye-bye.